now appearing in the building, up in every ear hole from 80 year olds to the children. You're here to hear about the heroes and the villains and save yourself some dollars, yen, and euros from the zeros to the millions. This is a lot of class packed into one podcast. They probably ought to have laws passed, but it's too late to stop the onslaught. Raw blast of compacted, bombastic, five-alarm sass. They're talking AVX, way back to secret invasion. They're talking flying up high in the sky, down to the feet on the pavement. They're reading the pages of every single one of the summer events. So other than Venice, you want to be coming to them when you want the Avengers. They're up inside of your environment with flying iron fists. Giant sized Goliaths and the tiniest super scientists. Try denying it, but I insist there's other podcasts, but this is Earth's mightiest. EMP, literally MP3, TNT. Young, new, mighty, and secretly Try and I in it, but I insist There's other podcasts, but this is Earth's mightiest EMP, literally MP3, TNT Young, new, mighty, and secretly Try and I in it, but I insist There's other podcasts, but this is Earth's mightiest Welcome, welcome to EMBS episode 44 we're here to shoot the breeze for about an hour, and we're going to get started right away because we got something to say. Yeah. Corwin. We were recording this as of October 11th, 2023. Yeah, I mean, I was just talking about how it's time for me to re-up my Disney Plus, and I'm like, is it worth it? Um, they're asking for like 130 something for like a year. I think like 140, but basically, and I'm like, you know what? Between Disney Plus and Max, it's, and other things, it's like I need to start cutting back on some of these. And I had to weigh between Max and Disney Plus, and it was just like the kids love Max because it has Adventure Time and and all those other Cartoon Network stuff, and they definitely get more out of that than I do with Disney Plus. You know, well, when I first signed up with Disney Plus, it was like for three years. Oh wow. You know, and it was like the same it was almost it was like one sixty, I think, for three years. You know, that's when it first started to get things rolling. And then last year when I renewed, it was like ninety bucks. And it almost doubled for this year. And I'm like, you know what? I don't think it's worth it anymore. Yeah, uh, that's how they get you. Uh, it, well you're not even saying core like you're you're just probably because it you just take it as writ at this point, but Netflix and you know I mean, Hulu's probably not everybody has it, but I I feel like Hulu is definitely one of the base level ones at this point. A lot of people have Amazon Prime, um, right? You guys, you guys both have mm-hmm. that, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, yeah. and that's not cheap either. I mean, uh, so it's definitely it's like the whole point was right, like cutting the cord, getting away from this crazy. Uh, being tied to this <laughs> thing that we couldn't control that was, you know, careening out of control for, for the price as well. And and now it's just, you know, uh, it's like a, a, a monster of our own design almost, right? Like we wanted all this freedom and now we got it, but it's like... <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I I, I, I get the, the sentiment just because you're so used to spending that much, but at the same time, we were back in the day we used to pay for cable and we used to like, oh man, I really wish we just had like be able to buy channels a la carte. And right. that's basically what we're doing. <laughs> like Yeah. I and I mean like if if I was if I wasn't so lazy and and smarter about it, I would I would just get one service one month and just binge the hell out of it and then That's exactly what I was gonna say. And then just let it just cancel and then move on to the next service. Subscribe for one month yeah, at a time. And exactly. then just jump just to the next binge, one the next month. Binge the hell out of everything. Right. Exactly. And yeah, but, uh, I'm in a position where <laughs> I, I basically fund, uh, streaming services for like my entire family. <laughs> so, for now, uh, has Netflix messed with you yet? With the yeah, yes, we can do not we yes. can do Netflix, but I still have my own Netflix. So um, you can't so do it, Disney either. Disney, it's can. coming. Yeah, it's coming for the other services too. Yeah, yeah. Right now, right now, it's still okay. I think so. 
Um, it's you're you're right about that. Uh, to you know to uh to a degree, it and it comes down to kind of how we've like trained our minds. Yeah, we also have this thing that we want to own. You you know what I mean? Like we want to own what we own, so to speak. And so there's the, that idea like, well, I want to be able to watch it whenever I want, you know, like because mm-hmm. I bought I paid for it. And I think people need to to some extent let go of that. Right. Like just understand like what what's the reality of like how many times that you're going to watch? I mean, I feel like I'm a weird case. I watch like animes over and over and over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like I in certain stuff, certain things, right? Like I, I, I pick them apart, like in and intentionally. But, but um, for a lot of people, it's like they watch something once and they really never watch it again. You know what I mean? Like, um, I think, I think maybe that's a little bit changing and uh, like generationally, but certainly for a long time it was like that. Um, the other difference is that it's not really quite the same as the idea of like buying. Uh, paying for a channel a la carte because if you think about Netflix, there's so much stuff on Netflix, more than like any one channel could ever show in like a year or two or even three, you know what I mean? Like as far as, so um, the libraries that are inherent in these services sort of offer more than it would be. It would be easier to sort of say, okay, I'm, I'm good with that right now. If they were a little bit more, more limited almost right <laughs> which is i'm sure goes goes uh, very much into the the thought process of how they set them up they won't they try and create um the the uh, trying to generate the the idea that they're they're sort of like limitless um choices under under each one but yeah man it's just it's getting to that point you gotta you gotta make choices it's it's uh yeah, uh, it's you just can't have everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, there's like a two to three things that really make a big difference with this. One, I probably would have dropped Max if it wasn't for the kids because I hate when they cycle things in and out. I understand that it may be necessary, and they still but do that a lot mm-hmm. with them. You're right. You know, if I want to, if something was there last month and I go to watch it this month and it's gone, it's frustrating. It's a pain yeah. in the ass. Yes, it's really annoying. annoying. And then, and then it's like nobody has it. So then it's just in a vault until you can figure something out or go to other means. Right, because there's no DVDs anymore. That's right? the second thing. That's I, I and I kind of stopped buying DVDs a little bit because that last Spider-Man movie pissed me off because there was no commentary at all, no director's commentary or anything. Because I'm the kind of person that would throw in a DVD and put the director's commentary on while I just do things around the house. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I told this story on this podcast, but I had like $12 certificate or something for Best Buy to burn. And I was like, you know what? Let me find something. Let me find a DVD to buy because I haven't bought one in forever. And I got everything everywhere all at once. And damn it, I put it in, threw on the director's commentary, and I had a great time with it. So nice. if the streaming services did offer director's commentary and some of those extras, I probably would have leaned a little bit harder into it. But I am very selective of what Blu-rays I try to buy now because it has to have the extras that I want. Because the movie alone is just not cutting it anymore. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know. T- so, all right. So then there's a there's a couple other things, right? Like via you mentioned, and I I did this too. Um, Hulu and Disney, and there's you know there's another service in it but i've i've never even opened it yeah it's like espn <laughs> plus or something espn plus or something. it's not even like i, I it's it's really honestly yeah it's, it's not it's even like, it's a joke. it's not even espn like you can't even watch if you ESPN. were a sports fan it, it would piss you off yeah it doesn't really <clears throat> actually offer anything but uh yeah so so yeah like i feel like if i let go of that am i gonna you know am i gonna reg- like i don't even know if it's still available to to buy the 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 package but like if i let it go then if i want to get it back am i gonna have to like pay for hulu and disney separate which both the prices already went up now and then i'm it's yeah <laughs> it's like uh, a little crazy i to to your point corwin um you know 
as far as letting Disney go. I'm almost surprised. It's it's almost surprising to me that that like you said, the kids would rather have Max. I mean, I I hear I hear what you're saying about the cartoons, but like, there's so much kids and family programming on the Disney um, on the Disney app. I I feel like I actually almost don't give it. Sometimes I like go searching through the di- like the Disney section just to see if there's something, you know, in there because there's a ton of stuff in there. <laughs> like it's kind of crazy. They go they back kinda... to like into the 60s. It's like they got well, tons of weird movies and stuff. It's I mean, not, stuff I never heard of. They're not going to go back that far, but I mean, honestly, they grew up with me, so they've already seen Oh, n- yeah, you know, yeah. all of the comic stuff, so none of that's kind of new. We ran, you know, Gianni and I have already ran through the X-Men cartoon. So we've 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 exhausted most of it, and it's not yeah. like. So what, what about when ninety seven comes out? Then I I wait for it to be over, and I'll probably jump on, pay the thirteen dollars for one month to watch it all. Yeah, yeah, I see what done. you mean. So, but crap, I'll tell saying. you, like I won't let let go of Disney because it's to me it's <laughs> it's worth it that all the Star Wars stuff is there immediately and i don't have to go like i mean i don't even own all the star wars dvds anymore you know what I mean? like i over time i've i've let them go or i've i've sold them or stuff like that True. and plus there's no dvds of the mandalorian or boba fett or I mean, oh, not that I, it's coming i've heard that but you know who knows what they're going to be are they going to be like these you know giant collector sets that they do a limited run or are they going to be okay yeah you can buy them for 20 bucks or something like <laughs> I don't know if they dropped it. We can we can research that. But they're they're coming. We should. I did hear that. I did hear that. But uh, but still, I mean, you know, we got we got Mando. Right now, there's three seasons. There's Boba Fett, Ahsoka, um, boy, Ahsoka. You know, and and who knows where we're going from from here? Star Wars, like, if <laughs> not that they have uh, historically played their cards right, but if they do, they've got nowhere to go but up at this point. They've you know, and so here, here's the off. other thing, though, Bobby. Disney Plus is not consistent with dropping something every week to keep people hooked. There's large gaps between things. Yeah, yeah we did get Ahsoka and Loki back to back, but after Loki, what's the next big thing? How long is it going to be? Yeah, four or five months. It's going to be a while. You're right. Yeah. So, you know, I can deal with those blank periods and then pick it up for a month and binge and then cancel because it's it's not worth the monthly price right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I th- I think I think it really does come down to sort of uh, it it's it behooves us to to take a hard look at like what am I what am I actually watching and using? And, um, you know, and if something's and if I'm not using something and it's coming back, just put it on the calendar or whatever. Put a reminder in your phone and like. Uh, not like you're gonna forget if ever, if you're if you know we're on the podcast and me and Viet start talking about a show and you're like oh shit <laughs> you'll obviously have it have it slotted but I think that's that's probably the move because it's just yeah man like when but in, when I was paying four ninety nine a month yeah. for Netflix and that was it that was cool now it's like my streaming budgets I feel like it's close to a hundred bucks a month that's that's not what I signed on for yeah but I mean it, 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 <laughs> in that sense it is a la carte. Right, as in, like you can, yes, you can stop. <laughs> you can just not pay for yes, it anymore. It is, right? It is. It's not and like, it's, but yeah. it's that mind. Yeah, it, right? I it's mean, it's not like you know, you paid for a hundred, you know, a hundred channels that you watch one channel of, you know, <laughs> and you know yeah. that kind of thing, you know. So it's, uh, so at least like we should. <laughs> we, I, it's one of those like like we've been spoiled for too long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's still it's still definitely. I mean, the the bottom line is, yeah, I would never go back. Yeah, right. Like this is way better. Um, it's uh, it's just becoming, uh, you know, it's like it's like all the <laughs> all the good things if you're an early adapter, right? Like. Oh, I remember back when, you know, nobody knew about it but me. And now it's it's how you do things. So, of course, it's uh the rules are a lot more <laughs> like concrete and and uh and the price goes up, right? Like uh, it's just it is what it is. I I I think um 
you know, I, I think you're right, Viet. Like, this is what we asked for. And uh, it's not so much about, um, like, looking a gift horse in the mouth. It's just, like, making sure you do things the right way and don't shoot yourself in the foot. Um, yeah, and, with the... and this is me not... And like, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not licking the boot of these streaming services or anything, <laughs> right? Because be it's a pig yeah, chill. Yeah, because they're they're pieces of shit and don't want to pay their writers and actors well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so glad the writers uh, got the deal that they want, and hopefully, hopefully, the actors will will be following suit pretty soon. Uh, yeah. the, the actors didn't. End, uh, I thought it was all over. I, no, I mean, I knew I knew it was the writers first, but I thought I thought that the uh, Agafra are the actors, still. Uh, that's too bad. Still, that's too um, bad. They're 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 still striking, and then um, I think recently they they also they also petitioned to uh, to strike against the video game companies all the the voice actors uh-huh. and stuff like that that's smart so. I, that's smart last, last i heard the actors in movie uh <clears throat> amt whatever they came together they had a meeting now they're separated and each side is meeting with their people and i think they're coming back together thursday or friday right so. yeah but yeah um, that's still going but the, there has been a deal officially been a deal with the writers so yeah writers are done they ratified it and everything yeah. Well, Viet, you mentioned video game companies, and to that, uh, sort of to that point, um, I mean, my understanding is that the video game industry is like a total shit show in that oh, yeah, regard. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> with the the most recent news being, you know, the that the Unity platform, which mm-hmm. like I don't think Unity really releases games, but it's like a it's an engine, yeah, it's a game right? engine. Like so. Uh, and again, I don't pay too much attention to it, but it sounded like they went from, you know, buying blanket licenses to you have to pay a little bit it, microtransactions, essentially, right, for for the developers along the way. So every little bit of the service that they want to they want to use, they have to pay for instead of being able to just purchase a license for the service and use whatever they want. Yeah. <clears throat> and it was, you know. I I believe they've since walked back, and and I just was reading before we started recording that they fired the CEO, <laughs> and um, you know because because the backlash was so big. Yeah, um, uh, I'm. And they they walked a lot, some of it back, but I mean they're definitely like. Yeah, uh, I'm. It's I'm in that increasing that. I guess like I'm sort of in sort of like the game indie game dev. Uh circles well being being on mm-hmm. twitch so much and uh yeah, like yeah there there was a lot of uh a lot of uh uproar about the whole unity thing lots of folks that you outspoken know, commentary yeah, yeah <laughs> like the you know that that created their games using unity and you know they have like steam games and indie games and all that kind of stuff so right there it was uh, I mean, I don't play very many video games, and I I know what Unity is. You right. know what I mean? Like I I see it I see it all the time, and uh, it's it's clearly become uh, you know I I understood that I thought that the the Unreal Engine would be the thing that became so big because I you know they were even they even use that like on animes sometimes to like generate the backgrounds for shows and stuff, but I don't know. I guess the uni- the Unity platform seems to be more or less the go-to so and it and it's a great thing because it it frees up um you know game developers to to make to be creative rather than you know spending their time trying to figure out how to make the you know sprites jump backwards at the right rate or whatever like it, it all that stuff is resolved in unity and then they can write good games instead of you know instead of working on that stuff but but um you know they they t- decide to to stick it to people because they know that they can it's just i mean i don't know why we're surprised free market capitalism i guess but <laughs> yep 
<clears throat> Capitalism bad. What? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so. All right. Um, that's what's on our mind. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, I I you totally get what you, what uh what you're doing, Corwin. And like I said, if I if I probably well, I I get HBO for free through AT and T. Oh shit! I gotta look at I gotta look that up. And again. Uh, <laughs> I forgot forgot yeah, about that. It's like, and it's one of the reasons why I don't get Crunchyroll. <laughs> I don't have Crunchyroll for that reason. So it, it I I get what you mean, Corwin. And for me, like Disney, like the because there's like a good amount of anime on it. You mean? Yeah. Uh, the anime I I I do watch is is usually on Netflix and Hulu enough. So yeah. I'm just like I, I I'm good with that. Um, and then uh, what's it called? The uh, yeah, like I have HBO, I have HBO Prime, but I don't watch anything on Prime. I use it for. For the shipping, um, I mean the damn interface yeah. sucks. The interface read. is really, really, really yeah. bad. I, and I get the I get the Disney bundle, and then HBO is free through AT and T. So we're probably kind of paying for it, but <laughs> not really. Not yeah, and then um, what else? And then yeah, Netflix. Crunchyroll is one of the most. Exp- I mean, sort of out the gate, anyways. I felt like this is the most expensive thing that, I, and I, 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 I saw it as something that I was going to do a la carte, regardless. Like I, I, when I let my crunchy roll, I mean, when it's, you know, when the shows are on that I'm watching, I watch them. But like, then I let it go, and yeah, you know, if I'm bored and all of a sudden I wanted to watch something, then I just go turn it back on. Like, but, but, um, yeah, I don't know with the with the up. With the with the prices increasing, it do, it just does make you it makes you think. Um, there is, you know, I I don't know, like I I feel like there's a lot of uh, uh, negative like like talk about about Netflix and anime. And I'm not sure why. It's like they they have they have a lot of. I feel like they are you know should be given a lot of the credit for the exposure anime's had in the last few years like in for anime becoming a bigger um house like a household term in the US uh, which um which one did Sony buy which anime was that Crunchyroll yeah they bought Crunchy or they they, they yeah. bought Funimation or something like that and then, they're the yeah. same they're the same and now they're the same yeah. i think yeah I think, okay. yeah, they were different. I don't know when they were di- they were separate, but but although the apps are different, and there's definitely different stuff on. I mean, there's a lot of crossover, but like most of the new shows when they come out, they're on Crunchyroll, not on Funimation. I don't know why. Um, and Hulu too. Hulu's got like. I mean, I wish that Hulu would update their catalog a little more often. Um, they do have a lot of stuff for anime on there. Uh, espe- I mean, especially if you're kind of new to it, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff to check out. That's like, you know, so to to fill out your palette so that you really know what <laughs> know your history <laughs> for anime. Um. All right. Um. I think. We complain. We talk, we complain enough. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to say something good there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bobby, what, what have you? What have you been into? Okay. All right. I last last time we did this, I felt like I was feeling bad. I didn't come to the table with much, so I made sure to watch some new stuff. And boy, have I got some for you guys. Either of you guys seen this movie called Sanctuary? On Hulu? No. Nope. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, all right. Sanctuary is a movie that there's it's there's only two people like in the it's like one of those, you know, takes place in a like one room kind of things. Um, 
there's two actors. One of them is the actor. I don't know his name. He was on that show Girls that was on HBO. He was Marnie's boyfriend, like, for most of the show <laughs> in the beginning. And uh, that's all I've ever seen him as. But he was on this. And then there's a, you know, there's a female lead. And I don't know her name. I don't didn't recognize her. Basically, it starts and it looks like he's he's having a job interview with this person. And then it sort of pulls back and you realize that he's, he's, he seems to be doing some kind of therapy and then it gets a little more intense and it's not therapy so much as like, (laughs) um, role play. Uh, it's, it's like, you know, BDSM. She's a, she's a, what do they call that? Dominatrix. Dominatrix. Yes. Um, it's really fucking good. I, Christopher I don't know. Abbott. That's the guy. Um, it's really interesting, like, like take on, like the the whole dynamic of that relationship. Um, the they pre- it's presented like it's a, when you when you read the synopsis, it it says that it's a dark comedy. I think that's a little bit misleading, but it's. I mean, it has a few comic elements. Um, it's pretty intense. It's not a horror movie, but it's definitely like intense, uh, like maybe a thriller. Um, uh, but yeah, it's just I don't know. I I've never seen anything like it. I really enjoyed it. So, damn to say you've never seen anything like it is big praise. Yeah, yeah. It really, it really, yeah. It, it it surprised me, um, so uh, I yeah I give it I give it a high praise. It's really worth worth checking out. I yeah, put on the list then. Okay, hey. on Hulu. Yep, Roman, what you got? <laughs> Ooh, the fall anime season started, but there's some other uh, I think movies we need to touch on. Um. Well, it's Halloween, so let's talk about Boogeyman. Ooh, twenty. I almost watched that today. I almost watched it today. Wow. Um, <laughs> uh, the Boogeyman. It's actually the official title, The Boogeyman. Um, it is based on a Stephen King story, I believe. Um, and it's yes. Basically about this family that lost their mother. So it's two daughters and a father trying to, you know, make their way through the world. Um, the father's a psychologist, and then one day somebody comes to see him, um basically asking for help since he lost his two kids to something. And basically he brings that something into the psychiatrist's life and he has to figure out how to save his children from this thing that's coming for the family. Um, very, very thrilling, I guess is the best word for it. The pacing of it is damn near perfect. The story at parts, yes, it's a little bit um, obvious what they're doing, but the shots that they use, the boogeyman itself, and the story that they build is something that is it's not completely unique but it's fresh if that makes any kind of sense sure it's it's very fresh and very not even different but entertaining i guess is the base term i could find for it but it really surprised me because i expected something that just checked all the boxes and it did a little bit more than that always nice uh this time of year if you get something that 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 works in that you know in that vein instead of just um you know as so is so often the case with horror even if it's good maybe for the first 45 minutes then there's like a reveal and then it's just all the same it's like always all downhill from there right like Mm -hmm. um so all right definitely gonna check that out i was like i said pretty close to Pretty close to turning it on today. I don't know why I didn't. I something. well worth it. All right, all right. Uh, what you got, Fit? Let's see. 
I guess this, this is sort of Halloween esque. Um, speaking of uh, not having Crunchyroll, um, <laughs> uh, Demon Slayer, uh, the Swordsman, uh, Swordsmith Village, uh, Swordsman uh, Village arc. Uh, yeah, that arc uh, was available on Netflix uh, at the end of yeah. September. So English dub too, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I watched. Uh, I watched all of that <laughs> in like a weekend. <laughs> And I, I'm kind of glad I waited to, waited to binge because, like, the way the episodes ended, I would, that would have pissed me off. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, the last jujitsu. The last. <laughs> I mean, what it made me think of uh, was, and I, I've, I've honestly never really spent any time with Dragon Ball, but how, like, I know there's like whole episodes where they're like powering. Yeah, up. yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's like that whole lot, like that last fight. It takes forever, right? yeah. And, but, but uh, paid off. Like a little tearjerker. At the oh end. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's the thing, right? Like, because I was getting through it, and I was like, "This is badass. Like, this is so cool." But at the same time, I was just like, "You know, these villains don't seem that threatening to me. Like, like it's not one uh-huh. of those things where just like I don't. I feel like no one's gonna die, right? And then we get to the part right. with Nezuko." <laughs> Then I was like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, 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 they can't do that. <laughs> I know. That's I how know. they get, that, that's how they get you. But, like, throughout, like, those, those dude, like, uh, yeah, the, 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 the demon with the baby hands, and the mouth for eyes, nightmare fuel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. It just creeps me out. But it, it the really, design you know, is it's... creepy as hell, but I, I never thought. Him or even like that the, he was so yeah, tough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But but to, you know what, Viet? I I felt the same way. It was one of those things that I feel like I had been watching it and looking at that demon, and then all of a sudden, like it was like my brain like put something into focus, and I was just like, oh my god! I just like I hadn't like somehow noticed total. You know what I mean? Like how how kind of just uh like stomach turning yeah yeah (laughs) his design was and it's really creepy it was pretty gnarly yeah um that's a good one but yeah it was it was really good flew through it and uh yeah (laughs) although uh i i think i mentioned this to uh uh to corwin i was just like hmm I was just like really strong, pink haired girl with big boobs, having trouble finding a man. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. little, little, I mean, you know, a little, a little suspension of disbelief here. I mean, if she could snap your head between her thighs, snap your neck between her thighs, there's a That's bit of danger. That's what I mean. Like involved. you know that it's you know it's you know Japanese societal you I know was standards. Like, oh my uh, god, she loves to eat. Disgusting. No, just like you know? oh no, like ugh. <laughs> Like who? Who? <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, like bad acting or big, yeah, <laughs> big, big boob girl with the big. She's really awesome. You're just like <laughs> she's really you're like awesome. oh gross. <laughs> yeah, totally. I totally get you. Get, it. No, get away yeah. from me. It sucks to be you. <laughs> Uh, all right. Yeah. So, okay. although my one complaint, what happened to my boy? <laughs> in those, in those yeah, case, okay, spends yeah. the whole the whole season on the bench. <laughs> so, and, that was a and one off, thing but. that it just, one thing that hit me because like I I I most I I watched it dubbed, right? Yeah. Is. I, I just realized why I don't like dubbed. And there's this one thing that I just noticed, and and I apologize if you didn't notice this, and this just might also drive you crazy. I I just have a habit of finding these little little ticks. <laughs> these little things. Uh but uh and I and I think it's just because of the dub and just because uh Japanese language just has a lot of syllables. But with dub specifically, there's always that. In other words, I did this. <laughs> right? Dubs always yeah. do that. 
right? And it, it and that's one thing that always gets on my nerves is just always just like he goes, I'm going put to another, go and right? do this. In other words, I just want put it put another way, right? They always say put another way. Yeah. You really yeah. Put another way, uh you really can't trust the judgment of humanity. Yeah, exactly. Like, right. What? Yeah, I I it is. It's a really weird thing. I noticed and, that too. And like, they're and probably I, doing that to fill in space because they're still talking. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's it's actually not. So it's not actually translation. It's more like just yeah, filling space. Yeah. I was wondering if it's. Uh, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I not so much not necessarily in Demon Slayer did I notice it, but I I absolutely have noticed that um, penchant in in anime dubs that yeah. that strange there's always the turnaround in other words do. This, i just like <laughs> just, explaining your whole yeah. sentence thing the reason that i noticed it is because <laughs> because i do it not i don't do it to my own i what i do is sometimes if people are explaining something and i'm not a hundred percent like i want to clarify yeah. that's what i that's my response to them i'll say so like basically what you mean is and right and then I try and sort of paraphrase or rephrase, but it's very it's very weird to hear somebody rephrase what they just said. Right, you know? exactly. Like, it, like, like, yeah, you do that to so you can you can sort of process it in your brain and, yeah, and get them right. to know that you're understanding what they're saying, right? But it's right, weird but, to paraphrase but just yourself just after you just yeah. said something. <laughs> It's totally, it's totally like, yeah, it doesn't make any sense in English to, to do that. I wonder, if, you must be right. It must be, because I, I, I was wondering if it's just something that happens in Japanese culture that people do that. You know what I mean? But I think you're, you're probably more onto something that it's just about filling the space of the, of the talking because of the syllable count, et cetera. Um, you know the other side of that, though, for me, because I watched, I watched it originally. I watched it all the way through, um, uh, in the you know in, without the dub. I watched it as it came out, um, which I told you guys I was like trying to do that and to to get a little more of that um, under my belt and see what all the the hype was about. And I still, I feel like I've I've like crossed the boundary for myself where now it doesn't bother me to watch um watch anime in the in the original but i still but i still do enjoy dub and the main reason is because i can't always there's a lot of stuff in the dialogue or rather in the grammar and the dialect of english that i can't understand or pick up when it's in Japanese sort of like the rise and fall of you know intonation that signifies like um sarcasm or like fear or anger or you know what I mean like the emotional sort of uh ebb and flow of the words is totally lost on me especially reading it now I don't know if that's a you know <laughs> like a learning disability on my part or something but it just like it just doesn't work it doesn't it doesn't like um it doesn't cross over for me so when i watch it in english i always feel like i understand better than like if i watch it first in japanese and then i watch it again in english i feel like oh like i, I find myself like doing that throughout do you, oh, do you guys think it. that like people in other countries are watching like the office and like having this discussion of like dubbed or subbed i wonder <laughs> like, i wonder i watching, honestly wondered that <laughs> people were watching breaking yeah. bad and i was like mm, you gotta watch that dub like you gotta watch that sub <laughs> like you need to see that i mean the... <laughs> you need to watch that in the original language you know what people are doing in other countries be it they all speak english <laughs> As well yeah. as their main language, yeah, that's as true. another second language. <laughs> um, they, but uh, they, 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 yeah, they've, that yeah. being said, and as well as yeah, as well as like a third yeah. language. That being said, the dub on on Demon Slayer is actually pretty good. It's really oh, yeah. good so, because it's newer. Yeah. Because the newer dubs have have a different, a much different. I mean, it's obvious that that the <laughs> the dubs of the eighties um, and the early nineties are a thing of the past, right? Like that stuff. 
There's a reason why it was a joke then, because it was a joke. It was when, like, you know. When Viet go- started this whole thing, I, I really thought he was going to get into the, the grunting that they do when they're fighting. Mm. Um, I thought that's where he's going with the huh. huh yeah, the, that, those, that kind of those are a there. little weird, but I mean, I, I can look past that. But Like, I, I get that issue and and another thing though is watching the like i pretty much watch everything with subtitles even like english stuff yep yes and and it one thing it it does bug me when the english dub doesn't match the subtitles (laughs) it is weird when that happens yeah but it it hurts my brain a little bit (laughs) yeah because i was like wait he didn't say that makes me wonder because right. like the you it know the you subtitle is what it was for the... you know the subtitles for the Japanese, and but it's even funnier because sometimes there'll be yeah. things completely. I'll, I'll be watching it in English, and the subtitles will give me more information than what the English is actually saying. Exactly. Sometimes every once in a while, yeah. Because I mean, you, like, you know, minute. it's the direct translation to the Japanese version, and they they do point, they do yeah. change it up. And I I I think I came across like a TikTok from like a you know, like a, uh, an anime voice actor in English one. And, you know, like, it was like people rag on, you know, like the differences and stuff and everything. But I was like, where, like, this is like this, the Japanese studios are giving us the direction. We're not, we're not doing any of that stuff. Like, it's like this, it's, it's the Japanese studios wanting it to cater to an American audience. And that's why they make those particular uh, changes. Hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. even even more than that, Viet, I'm talking about English yeah, yeah. stuff that I watch subtitles on just because the damn kids sometimes make too much yeah. noise. And it's an English show and the subtitles will be different yeah, yeah, exactly. tell more. It is weird. I, I agree. It's um... But like, yeah, the, the dub can be like they make those changes purposefully, but and it doesn't, <laughs> so it could be like a complete style change or maybe it's like one of those like it's it's a joke that or like a you know like a pun that makes sense. It does. In a it's different a idiomatic, language, yeah. right? Yeah. It's it, it uh, so so it the reason that I think it hurts your brain, be it right, is because like the the sort of the unsaid thing behind that is well, what else aren't they telling? Yeah, you? exactly. <laughs> right, but but I I I sort of imagine like you just said that the reason this happened is because it's directly because they said something that just literally won't make any sense to me or, or maybe like they're talking about something that's so specifically, although they don't even really do this that much anymore. Like so specifically um, like cultural to that, like a, a geographical landmark or something, but you really don't even hardly hear them change stuff like that anymore. They usually leave that stuff in. So it feels to me like it's, it's definitely i mean it, it's such a it's such a different game now like the the dub i don't know i mean it's a it's a real it's a fact of anime right like there's like dubs happen so i feel like they said well if we're going to do it let's do it the best we can instead of just making it a shit show for from now till the end of eternity yeah it seems like they've worked pretty hard to make to pull it out of the you know pull it out of the dumpster um yeah they're, they're yeah they're still good for sure but it does you know it does leave it leaves questions you know what it really <laughs> uh the reason it hurts my brain is then i start thinking about like so who translated the bible and like uh what did they leave out oh yeah, yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> it's like it becomes extremely yeah. meta like <laughs> Uh, it is, it is opens too many questions <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah like things can get cool uh lost in translation yes they can but it was very uh, good. <laughs> nope yep, yep. Right. Yeah. we went we went we went long on that yeah. one who's, who's that one back to bobby um yeah so corwin did you talk about infinity pool uh no, I have it to watch and I still haven't watched it yet. Beat, have you seen it? Nope. Oh my god, <laughs> this one's pretty hectic too. I mean, Sanctuary is not well; it's got its hectic moments, but 
it's like you guys should should watch it. Infinity Pool is um really gnarly. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> guys. Keith Giffen what? passed away. Who? Keith the Giffen. Artist. Oh, Keith Giffen. Right. Yeah. Oh, man. Creator of Rocket Raccoon Creator. and Lobo. I was going to say oh. uh, Lobo. I didn't know he created Rocky Raccoon. Yeah, 70. Oh, oh man, that's loss. Sorry. <laughs> uh, that's rough. Mm. Rest in peace. <clears throat> um, oh, yeah. Infinity Pool uh, stars Eric Northman. Uh, what's his name? Um, you know, he's... Uh, the guy from Andor's son. <laughs> What's that guy's name? I can't remember their names. The Swedish actors. <laughs> Whatever. You guys know who I'm talking about. I Eric Hartman so, yeah. from or, uh, from uh, from uh, uh, the Blood movie, the Vampire Show. I mean, whatever. True Blood. True Blood. Um, he's the main. Uh, he's the yeah the protagonist. So he's on vacation and uh, with his wife and um, they meet up with some other folks who are vacationing from somewhere else and um, they get drunk together on the beach and, and uh, his, his new friend is too drunk to drive home and he's driving the car and they hit somebody um, and he was, he was drinking and he, he thought he wasn't drunk but he clearly was, and so um, they try to cover it up. They try to, you know, they like they like hide the body, and um, you know, it's like it's pretty gnarly. They they try to try to get away with this crime, <clears throat> and then uh, you know the the police come to his door, and they're not just the police; they're like the military police, and basically. You know, every crime down to like shoplifting on this island that they're visiting is punishable by death. And, uh, but there is a, um, there is a, an alternative, uh, which you, you can pay to have a doppelganger created and have your punishment carried out against your doppelganger. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not going to lead to any problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh <laughs> so their response is basically like and and so he was he's married to this woman he's a writer but he's like not a very good writer he like he's published one book and in, and it was published by his wife's father's company his wife turns out is like the heiress to this publishing like like uh you know empire and so He's like married into money, right? And he's, um, and he he's very self conscious about that. But um, so his response is essentially like, well, I guess I can do anything I want, like because we can just keep paying paying the money to get out of it. And his friends feel the same way, and they like sort of welcome him into this little crew of <laughs> of miscreants that have all decided that. Like the lifestyle here is is the best if you can afford it, and um, yeah, and hijinks ensue. It's pretty have, have pretty you guys gnarly. Seen, um, <laughs> um, um, oh crap! The Jordan Peele one. Um, uh, them. Yes, there we go. Yes, you see. got it. It, 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 it's it, it, it has i mean there's there's notes of that but it's it's um well it's it's certainly about like you know the depths of your own soul but you know based on the the mirrors that we use right like but um it's yeah it's just a crazy one i i don't know the the title I guess confused me. I thought it was going to be maybe like a murder mystery kind of, well, you know, it almost sets it up like it's going to be that. And then it's very much not that, <laughs> but it's very good. Um, another really good one. 
I was I I saw it on Hulu, but I think it actually was in the theater. So, uh, it I'm was not, yeah. Um, but it is on Hulu right now, so it's definitely also worth a watch. It's a little you know, um, sort of it's bleak, I guess you could say, but <laughs> but it's good. Did we we talked about last love, One Piece last time, right? Yeah, of uh, live action you, you, or yeah, you, you were well. We, you know, we mentioned the show, but then you said the the cartoon, the anime, and then you were saying that uh, a lot of anime uh, live action doesn't translate, and One Piece is great. Okay, so we did do that. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Um, damn, rest in peace, Keith Giffen, Blue Beetle, on another one of his creations. Have anybody <laughs> seen that one nope. yet? No. Surprisingly, it is a very, very good movie. Really? Like, much better than I thought it would be. Uh, completely stands on its own. It is a family... It is a family movie. It is definitely about family, and... It's it's starring uh, that guy from Cobra Kai, right? Yes. <laughs> the kid yes. from Cobra Kai. And... It is by far one of the best DC movies dropped. I mean, way better than The Flash, which isn't saying that much. Um, what came out before The Flash? <laughs> like like Sh- Shazam? Shazam 2, I think. Yeah. yeah, better than that. Yeah, and then before that, the movie that I thought was Shazam 2 called Black Adam. Oh, better than that too. So it's... It, yeah, it's, sh- it's one of the ones that's definitely shining. So I could understand if uh, they want to bring this over into the new DC universe because character was great. The the CGI was, God, think about Flash. The CGI was just so much better than Flash, and it was very solid. Great well, storytelling. Mm-hmm. My question to is not to you necessarily. I think this might be the first movie that technically, um, uh. James Gunn. Nope. No? Nope. It isn't. Okay, my bad. My bad. Sorry for interrupting. But he's probably <laughs> going to keep it. He's probably going to stay in the universe, so. Yeah. Cool. That's good. Definitely check it out. Nice. I'm not going to huh. spoil it. Yeah. <laughs> when it goes on HBO, I'll probably check it out. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's on demand Lord, right Lord now. Knows, so. uh, Lord knows. Lord knows. <laughs> It doesn't take much to be the the best DC outing in a while, but but I mean, it's like I, I I'm never gonna n- not root for them, but it's they've just been so disappointing. Like, so it's nice to hear. That yeah. they, uh... <laughs> Anyways, uh, where I'm gonna go go silly, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up on uh, behind your touch. Because I think last episode I only watched like two episodes of uh, Behind Your <laughs> oh, Touch, yeah. uh, which is right. a, a K drama on Netflix uh, about a woman that gets psychic visions from touching people's butts. Yes. And uh, yes, surprising, surprisingly, like it, it's very, it's very silly, and <laughs> and 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 I I find it fun that like just the characters are really weird and dumb but then like towards maybe like towards the middle latter part it gets really serious <laughs> as hard as that is to, to see but it gets like super serious because they're trying to catch this serial killer and then it becomes like this this like uh suspense thriller because you don't know who who the the killer is <laughs> right and okay, <laughs> and then like, and the whole time, like it, 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 like the tone is just completely serious. It's not silly anymore, right? And then like, you have to like take a step back sometimes, where you're just like, it's like, because he's like, no, you have to use your power, you know, and all this stuff. And then, <laughs> like, you know, it's like really dramatic. And then it's like, dude, he's talking about like touching this dude's butt. <laughs> <laughs> like, and he's just like, <laughs> and then, and then, um, it the way it ends, 
like it, they 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 solve it right at the end they figure it out and then the last episode is back to really dumb like almost like comically dumb and uh <laughs> and i i enjoyed it dr wife did not enjoy that <laughs> at all cuz it was very dumb and i was just laughing at how dumb it was but i i think it's worth watching although like every episode is like literally like an hour long so... <laughs> right um a lot of the K dramas, yeah, and uh, and K dramas don't mess right? around. They don't. They don't really do sequels. Like they're they're very similar in in regards to like uh like BBC and like they're just kind of like this is the story. And that's it. That's all you get. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm glad it didn't go any further with this. But I I think it's <laughs> worth. I think I thought it was worth watching. Well, you know, <laughs> some things are worth watching. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> also, uh, my my friend Daniel calls it butt toucher instead of behind your touch, and I mean, that's just, she's not wrong. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's butt my picture. <clears throat> Watch butt toucher. Um. Hmm. So, uh, are you? Is it my turn? Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I see. One second. So, not you, not you. All right. Okay. So, I. All right. I have a, a couple things on my list that I that I rewatched. Um, but one that I like, uh, I was going to talk about Akira rewatching it, but I don't know. I rewatch Akira every year and it's just, it gets better and better, but, um, I think that's just the state of things. Akira is just a fantastic masterpiece. I rewatched Mr. Robot recently. Uh You guys, you guys, you guys get like all the way through it. I was watching it. Yeah. When it was out. Yeah. Weekly. Cool. Yeah. I, I, um, I thought that I had seen the whole thing. I mean, I'm pretty sure I did watch it and that I just kind of, I think I forgot some of it, but, um, man, it's just like, it's such an amazing, I mean, uh, it's just really well thought out. Um, it feels like, it feels like, uh, and I think. Um, the guy, the creator, Sam S. Mail. I'm pretty sure this is his first, like, he may have been a writer on some other things, but this was his first, like, outing as a, you know, first thing with, like, his name on it. I'm pretty sure. Um, <clears throat> anybody who hasn't seen Mr. Robot, like, I guess it's probably most, like, most famous for, for feeling like it's a ripoff of Fight Club. Like, it's it sort of starts out with this premise that is Mm -hmm. this guy who uh, very quickly uh, it becomes revealed that he has uh, multiple personalities and he's also trying to reset the, the debt structure of the, (laughs) of the world, which is what apparently happens at the end of fight club. So, um, it feels like that, but but everything that sort of like really significant that happens in the show happens after they they accomplish that, and um, I don't know. It's just really it's just it's so like in it's like it's so much about the like the state of the world, and it's also so intensely like personally character driven. Um, it just seems like this guy really the writers were just so dialed into like the human condition. It's really kind of astonishing. Um, I, th- I think the end, I, I don't know. I, I, it, it certainly takes a, a turn that like I didn't see coming. And there's a few things that like never really get explained that or you know, to some extent, like I kept trying to, 
on this watch through, I, I kind of decided that, and I go back and forth on this, but there was the character Tyrell Wellick, who's like the, one of the E, E Corp, um, you know, officers, he's like, you know, and he's sort of in league with Elliot. Yeah. But then he just, right. I, I, I did, I decided that he, he must be another personality, but I'm not sure about that, but I'm pretty sure (laughs) cause he just like, he comes and goes, you know, he like disappears almost in the same way that Mr. Robot does. And, um, I, it, it feels to me like one of these things that I could probably watch it. I mean, it's pretty long. It's, it's four seasons, but it's like, they're like, they're long seasons. Like, uh, back when they were still doing like 20 episode 20 episodes, shows, 24 episodes. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I feel like if I rewatched this, like a couple more times, I'd still be finding stuff, you know, that I feel like, the 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 details are I bet you that if you watch it and like tried to take like screenshots of like the backgrounds of of some of like the you know the settings that you'd find out that they contain all kinds of information that like relates to later on in the right <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean it's got that type of feel to it um so yeah i don't know i i really liked it when when it came out i really sort of like uh, empathized with the the hero's <laughs> you know mission statement <laughs> still probably do um but you know it it doesn't really it's not that cut and dry it's not i think the the show's a lot more about you know the idea that you know hero is a kind of a, a l- pretty loaded term you know and like there's consequences for everything and that kind of thing so it's really good. If you haven't seen it, I really highly suggest it. I saw it on it's on Prime right now. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I haven't. And it aired on USA. Yeah, it aired on USA, <laughs> and then I think the last season was was straight on Prime. I think, and I think I watched it. Oh yeah, they were releasing Maybe. them. Hmm. Yeah, I I can't remember because even I think when. When it was airing, I mean, I remember watching the first season definitely on USA. I think after that, I might have been well redacted, but you know, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this robot was stuff. good. Check it, it out. It did get weird towards the end with um, I guess when they were dealing with with I guess the Chinese. <laughs> That's when it kind of got like a, a little weird. Yeah, but I was like, all right, I'm on board. Yeah, I mean it yeah, exactly. I was I I sort of trusted the yeah. trusted the process, but it it still was um a a big departure from the rest of the show, but but uh it's it's pretty good. I think it's I still I think it holds up uh very much, you know what I mean? It's like it's been a a crazy few years since that show came mm-hmm. out even though it, I think it I think it started in like 2014. And wow, it's almost been 10 years, I yeah. guess. Crazy. Wow. Really? Is it really that old? Yeah. I think so. Or, yeah, like 2014 well, I, I still live in Atlanta when it was first starting. So that's that's about right. I, I moved to Florida in 2014. Yeah, 2015. <laughs> that's pretty nuts, right? <laughs> Damn. Time flies. Almost 10 years. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> that's all I got on that. <laughs> all right, what you got? Check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, decisions, decisions. I think I'm going to say the anime stuff for next episode. I think I'm going to jump fully give, into the anime. Give me some, some time to catch up. <laughs> so let's see. We did Blue Beetle. Um, have you guys seen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem? Not yet. Ne- okay, Ninja- I'm going to save it. Okay. Then. That's, I do need that's to watch be it. Some heavy discussion. Heavy discussion on that one. All right. Um, so well, we talked about Amazon. That's one thing that Amazon has that nobody else has. It's the boys, including the spinoff Gen V. Oh yeah, that's right. Which that's is right. the kids in basically high school training to be the next generation of superheroes. They're in college and, or college, 
Um, yeah, I think it is college. But it's basically superhero school where they're trying to get this next generation. Um, it's just called Gen V. Oh, Gen V. Um, yeah, Gen V. Uh, but, of course, the plot thickens as, of course, as some revelations that happen during the boys kind of affects how these kids come about their powers and kind of change the dynamics a little bit. But then there's just a big mystery of somebody dying and what's behind it all. And I like that they played it up as a straight up kind of, this is mystery. This is the problem we need to solve. And they go about it using superpowers in different ways as of course, only the boys can, because you have, a character called Cricket who she can shrink. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. She can shrink. And, um, they all really, the craziness. No holds that, barred. <laughs> that comes with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will save the surprises for you, but. <laughs> oh my. They. It's not for you, children. This show. <laughs> have you guys watched the boys? Yeah. Or, I watched the boys. I know you haven't read the comic. Okay, yeah. so you know Love Sausage. So yeah, yeah. yeah, it gets into some crazy stuff like that, but it's a lot more entertaining than I thought it would be, and they really, the writers really did their homework and fleshed these kids out and come up with something interesting to tell. All right. So, the boys and this show um, are like created but you know quote unquote even though it's you know created by uh what up garthinus and mm-hmm. um uh by the guy who created supernatural <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah uh, eric, and... eric eric Kripke. Kripke. yeah they all had a hand in it Seth yeah rogan. and rogan and uh evan what's his name gold goldberg yeah there's a couple of them in there so the guys that created um preacher a little sore on that one because they they I, you know what i still haven't watched like the last episode of preacher because i think they missed some of the point with preacher and then they did that prequel thing where they try to go back yeah it, it got it just it, it sort of fell apart for me i, I just yeah i couldn't figure out yeah. what they were trying to trying to do they, you know they got some of it but then they veered a little bit too far off on other parts of it so yeah. it was it was very visually compelling but it just yeah, lost me, lost me on it. I tried to stick with it, you know. <laughs> no, I'm gonna finish it one day. One day, one of these days. I only got like one episode left. <laughs> <laughs> that's very, very awesome. Um, <laughs> and that's probably one of my all-time favorite comics for listeners out there. Preacher Preacher comic. Just go read it. Sorry, Viet. Uh, let's see. Uh, I I'll do go in one more round, one last round. Yeah, yeah. All um. Right. Or you got two? You got two in your beat? <laughs> I do have two, but if we're just going to go right, one, cool. if we're just going to go one, uh, I feel like we can't go not talking about Castlevania Nocturne. Oh, damn it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was, well, thanks. I'm glad you, <laughs> glad you picked it. <laughs> you watch the whole thing? Yes. Like in like yep. two days. <laughs> yeah. But, I, they brought it. Yeah. 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 No Warren Ellis. I didn't see Warren Ellis's name. Yeah. Right. And it, it it was interesting. I, like, I have one friend that, like, thinks it, like, it was, like, probably the one person that doesn't, like, absolutely love, love the Castlevania series. <laughs> but it's mostly just because, like, he's more of, like, a upset about like what they like what they chose to focus on with the story like as far as like like how they ported it from the game no mm-hmm. not porting it from the game but it's just like you know like the which belmont yeah not which belmont but it's just like hey you know like this, there's this whole slavery story, angle or there's and... this whole storyline about all of the the badass women vampires wanting to take over the world and i was like you know what? We're gonna show a scene of them sitting in a library reading books. <laughs> you know, 
Uh, yeah, I I don't know enough of the storyline of Castlevania. That, like, not, I mean, except even even the first series was yeah. What was it, Trevor Belmont? Like my last Castlevania playthrough was probably Super Castlevania. So yeah, like, and <laughs> and not not even story wise, but like I and, and I was just like to be fair to him. If you ask me, like what happens in in like the Castlevania series, I wouldn't be able to really tell you. All I know is that it was awesome and it was gorgeous. The, the games, <laughs> the games. You mean? Yeah. No, I mean in the anime. No, the last series. <laughs> oh, just in the anime. Yeah, you know, like I, it, it, it. Yeah, you know, like story wise, it it's not its strong suit, right? Like it's it's gorgeous. The action scenes are awesome and it's badass, and I love it, right? <laughs> but, like, don't ask me what happened, right? <laughs> um, Viet, when you when you first started, when you were talking about the um, the guy in Demon Slayer, mm-hmm. the, I immediately started thinking about Castlevania too, yeah, yeah. because of the way that they did the night creature monsters in this series. Yeah, that was yeah, pretty. Yeah. That was yeah, pretty off putting as well. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> and it was um, but this one's a lot more together. I thought, uh, like the story, or it, it probably, I agree. It probably helped right. that I, I did watch it like all in two days, but yeah, it was, it was so good. It, it the got only, it thing... got, oh, it go got like a, a 54% on Rotten Tomatoes from the audience due to, uh, bigots. So, ugh. It's always going to be somebody. Heaven, heaven forbid we have some uh, black and and queer vampires in their in their white vampire story. <laughs> How dare you? The oh only God. thing, Jesus, only thing that was missing, or did I really miss, was the back and forth between Belmont and Alucard. <laughs> like, yeah, those yeah, two they, antagonizing they each have... other. But that's Warren Ellis. Right, like, like, right there. Well, you know what I mean? Like, that's his writing. That's him. I, I maybe. think. Maybe. I think so. But I just, I just kind of missed that little bit of back and forth. Um, the, the, uh, what's the name? The Belmont in this one and the the Haitian girl. I think may have some of that coming, but you know, I really miss some of that ripping that they used to give each other in a hard time because yeah. that shit they, was officially. They played funny. it a lot. They played it a lot straighter. <laughs> yeah, it was. No, it was really good. <laughs> That's that's very true. Yeah, it, I I think my only complaint about it was, like, like some of the the singing parts was a little cringe. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I was just like, I I just I don't buy it. He doesn't sound like that. <laughs> or like, even if he does, right? I'm just like, you like it was a little much. It, it it was it was just funny, right? Because he was just like. Oh, it is just like, uh, are you mourning someone as well? And he's like, I shall sing for you. And dude just busts out like this D'Angelo falsetto. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, whoa, what, what's happening it was right now? <laughs> it was, it I, was much. It was, it was, it was extra. Yeah. As they say, you know right? what, what lost me a little bit? Overall, so, this was like a what? Four, four hours? It was. Yeah. Like really yeah, short. eight episodes. It felt short. I, I agree. Really short for a series, and then like not even too long after they announced season two. But season two is going to be what twenty fifth, twenty twenty five. Yeah. Who knows? Was, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, with anime, and and then the other thing I wanted to say about it is anime. I mean, I, I think. And get correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't like the sort of the point that they're it's not CGI driven? It looks like it's all hand drawn. Doesn't it? I mean, some of the some of the backgrounds, but but not in the way that you see CGI in in anime nowadays. It's like good, it looks a, very much hand drawn to me. A good studio can yeah. make you CGI mm-hmm. and still make yeah. it look like. I wonder though. I believe. Look you. at Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer yeah. used plenty of CGI. Yeah. I but agree, but I, it's not one hundred percent obvious. Yeah, but come on, you can. I, I don't know. I think because you can even tell because it's it's short for for some of the frames. Like it, I mean, the action is great, but it's like in the CGI, you can you see every motion, and you and there's no way to hide that when it's CGI because you you know what I mean. Like it, you you the the 
the character moves through every frame regardless. And I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm going to look it up because I I I again I'm not I'm definitely not sure. But but um, I was getting I always had that feeling in the first run, and even more so, it kind of struck me this time around. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's uh yeah it it just it probably just takes a while because it's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Yeah, um, it, it is gorgeous. Yeah, like the the an, the animation is so good in those in that series. Castlevania was always going to be two D hand drawn animation. The blood, sweat, and vampires of anime Castlevania. It was uh, it was very good. I I love it. Yeah. There's no CGI. <laughs> oh, I found something that said it's a mix of 2D and 3D, the Deets brothers, using their own software to blend the two styles together. Okay, whatever. It's good. Watch it. It's very good. I was just like, I was like, Richter getting all, like, getting all Super Saiyan over here. <laughs> <laughs> he did kind of level up. Uh, I love when he ran into the old man, too. That was, uh, that came out of yeah. nowhere. I was um, I was ragging our on our our good friend Richard, who's uh he's a he's apparently all up in the in the Castlevania lore, like played all the games. Oh yeah, hardcore into lore. Oh yeah, and he just started talking about Simon, Simon Belmont. Like we we skipped yeah. over Simon completely. Well, that was my that was my <laughs> yeah <laughs> my big. And I just I just trolled him with I was just like you mean you didn't like this version and I showed him the Simon from uh Captain N <laughs> <laughs> What's Captain N? You don't remember Captain N? The old Nintendo, the Nintendo cartoon? cartoon? The guy oh with the gosh. with the with the Nintendo I belt buckle and the varsity jacket. Wow. He had a, he had a team that. of Nintendo people. Wow. Look it up. <laughs> You'll get a kick yeah. out of it if you if you remember si- it. You'll Simon get a kick Belmont out of it. is like a goofball. He's like the he's he's like Launchpad, Launchpad yeah. McQuack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's the Launchpad McQuack. Yeah, and like Mega Man, Mega Man sounds like he smoked like like twenty packs <laughs> of cigarettes. It was. <laughs> It was a weird time <laughs> in cartoon history. You know, I <laughs> looking this up, I do sort of I have like a recollection of hearing about it, but I definitely didn't watch this. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he's just like <laughs> he's like, you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh man. <laughs> I was uh, pleasantly surprised to hear a couple months ago that there was going to be another Castlevania series. Although I didn't know it was, I, I guess I thought it was going to be like a straight sequel or like another, you know, uh, continuation of the straight off the last one. This is very much yeah, not that. They, they ended the last one in a really good I, yeah, really I, 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 I mean, it surprised me thinking that because I I thought they did they did that as well. Um, I I guess only for the reasons like you just said, Corwin, that I was, you know, I missed the the Trevor Belmont and Alucard, but it's it's great. It's it's really good. I, I fully enjoyed and the it. Alucard the reveal one. at the end of Nocturne. Yeah, it was cool. It was like Whoa. awesome too. Because then it's well, yeah, it was just like oh, thank. Then it's it's only gonna get better. Great, yeah. I'm I'm excited. Yeah. Apparently, uh, there's gonna be a Devil May Cry uh, anime. anime made by the same people that made Castlevania. The, the first series wasn't too bad. Um, you, you mean like from the the first one, like from the '80s? No, there was a Devil May Cry series. Twenty ten. Maybe I'm maybe I'm crazy. Oh, 2007. Okay, my bad. Yeah. 
<laughs> Sorry. It wasn't bad. All right. Yeah, I think I've seen some of it, but I can't really remember. Um, okay, I watched a movie the other day that I got a kick out of a little more than I thought I was going to. It's on Prime. It is called Totally Killer. And the uh, the star is uh, the young woman who was, she played Don Draper's daughter on Mad Men. I really, I can never remember her name. Um, uh, she's, she's also in the, the, uh, um, that show on Netflix that's about the the like daughter of Bewitched. What's that show called? I can't remember what it's called. Anyways, um, she's a pretty good actress. So it's sort of it's like a kind of like a high school movie. It feels like it's gonna be like a riff on Back to the Future. They that it takes place. You know, it's like present day, and there's a science fair, and like you know, this girl's friend invents a time machine, and then she goes back in time. But instead of it really being like <laughs> a riff on Back to the Future, she goes back oh, in time Sabrina. to 1987. Yeah, there okay. it was. Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Um, but yeah, I, I think that character is like, she's the daughter of... Anyways. Um, <clears throat> so she goes back in time to 1987 and like, you know, she'll be like, wait, you're going to drink and drive? And they're like, well, I'm such a better driver when I'm drunk. And like, <laughs> she, the whole time she's like, I can't believe the eighties. It's so, it's like a murder mystery. Like her mom, she, in the, she, she, her mom's friends were killed in high school. And then like her town is famous for that. So it also has this crossover. Like maybe it's going to be like scream and she goes back in time and then she's going to try to stop the murder mystery. Um, and, and it's just like the whole time she's like, how am I ever going to stop this? These people are all going to die. Like, <laughs> it's really, it's pretty funny. <laughs> I, uh, I got a kick out of it. <laughs> I'm not describing it well, I can tell. But still, uh, it's totally killer. Nice. We got you. We got you. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. It just has... I don't know. It it has mom. It, it's moments. You know what I mean. It's like uh, there's just some good chemistry in it. It worked. I'll never watch it again, though. It's definitely a one timer. <laughs> All right, Corey, what you got? Right. Uh, let's see. I'm staying away from anime. Uh, we did Boo Beeble. We did Boogeyman. Um, you fellas watch Barbie yet? Do I have it? No, <laughs> sir. No, sir. Watch it. There's talk of genitals. Um, okay. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard really good that. things about it. But yeah. It is great. Yeah. It is great. I will have to say, it is a great movie. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to hit streaming. You know what? Let me take the easy way out. Let me talk about Elemental, because Elemental. it's Pixar. That was the one oh, that's really like... Shouldn't... I, I, like something it got like the worst like the the worst box office uh thing of oh, Pixar yeah of any Pixar movie um I, well I can understand cuz at this day and age it's not really easy to draw people out to the movies it is a great love story and I got to say I almost choked up a little bit oh so <laughs> Watch it with your ladies. Right. Um, it's it's just it's a heartfelt love story, and well, I don't want to spoil the, the movie itself, but um, where there's a will, there's a way. All right, and so you're saying you know, there's a chance. Exactly, <laughs> it, it delves into family too because you know they're from two different backgrounds, and the the fire chick is a very um, Eastern philosophy when it comes to her family and the family business and trying to make her dad proud, but kind of denying what she wants for herself. So there's some pretty cool, not pretty cool. There's some interesting things they touch on when it comes to family and finding your way. And 
love. So I, I was surprised. It was deeper than I thought it was going to be. It's got a pretty good rating on whatever I'm looking at. I don't know what this is, but <laughs> yeah, it is a solid. Yeah, solid I, I think it was just like the lowest grossing Pixar movie ever, or something like that. I just remember that story. I mean, timing. I blame it all yeah. on timing. Yeah, I I have to say that. Like there's, it's it's almost not fair to to like judge box office yeah, anymore, right? Yeah, post pandemic. Like a, yeah, it's it's a different it's a different era for for movie theaters. There's it's just never going to be that the way it used to be again. Right. Well, maybe it will, but it's not right now for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, this is our last pick. Yeah, this is our last round. Yeah. 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 Um, I just finished uh the last the. The season of uh, Vinland Saga on Netflix. Oh, um, that's my next up on my list. Um, it was it was good. It was really good, but like, don't like if you're expecting like action, it's it's not action packed at all. <laughs> um, it's it's sort of um, it's like Thorfinn in his like Rurouni Kenshin era. So say that, say that again. Like it, it's his kinship. Yeah, era. you know, like where he's like reflecting on all of the war that mm. he's going through, and then, so it's very slow, but it's very story driven and character driven. Um, I, I I wonder if the manga actually started at this phase and then flashed back to what we saw in the first season. I think. I don't remember if that's how it was. Yeah, I, I it's like it's one of those things where I haven't, I haven't. It's been a while since I watched the first season, so I was like, I kind of don't remember how it ended. But oh, he got captured. His what's his name got killed, and the person he's been following trying to okay, kill. Yeah. So so yeah, and, and it, take it, it takes fall. place as yeah. You you meet and you get a new character, right? Um. You get a new character, you kind of get him, but then you, he's introduced to Thorfinn as a slave. And then it goes from there. And did you, have you, did you just like, had you not watched any of it yet? Huh? yet? No, yeah. Had I, you not I watched, watched any of this of, season. Yet? I watched all the first season, uh, back when it was on Amazon prime, I think. Uh, so I watched right. all that, but I haven't, I haven't watched the Netflix, like since it's been on Netflix, the, this newest season. So I, I kind of binge watched that okay. in the past, like your. I got you. Um, yeah. they were releasing it weekly too. Yeah, they were Netflix. releasing yeah, it they weekly. Were. So I, I waited for it to be completely done, and I binged through it. I finally get, went through it, and uh, yeah, it was it was good. But just know that it, you're not gonna you're not gonna if you're expecting a whole bunch of war no, and action and stuff like that, you're not gonna get that. Hmm. Um, but uh, there is some. There is some gruesome stuff here and there, but it's it's definitely very much more story driven. Different, totally yeah. different, yeah. different, completely different uh, feel. I mean, in a way that, I, I mean, I think it it takes the the carnage of the first season to drive home the points of the second. Right, right. In a lot of ways, so it's. Did you watch it's it all the way through? Um, I think so. I watched it either, and I watched it as it came out. I can't remember. I might not have seen like the very last episode, but I, I, I think I watched it all because I remember there was like a whole there was a big hullabaloo about some a couple of his lines that he had towards the end of the series. But um, and it definitely ended it, in a way where like I don't think there's going to be more. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, it also <laughs> is you know being the big uh, Viking Viking show lover. Uh, there, there's still like a lot of similar names. There's like like uh, I got Corin wa- watching uh, Vikings of Valhalla, and I was just like, there's King Canute. Uh, that, that's a name uh, that that, <laughs> yeah. that uh, Corin's really familiar with, and and things like that. So I was like, hmm, interesting. Yeah, it's a good pick. Yeah. Yeah. 
Cool. Thank. All right. All right. Um, we we doing a doing a legendary Marvel. Yeah, prof. Yeah, let's knock it out. We skipped it last time. Yeah, right? we did. Yeah. Um. Okay. So. Uh. Yeah, so this is our scenario for Legendary Marvel Improv. Our main boss is Modok. So you know this is a serious <laughs> storyline. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, our mastermind is Modok. Our scheme, our title of the book is called Corrupt the Next Generation of Heroes. And our villain pool that we can use are the Phalanx, Hydra, and the intelligentsia. Ooh. Right? And then our heroes are Captain Britain, Drax, uh, Jane Foster Thor, Namor, and Nova. Let me let me pull up all the mem- all the members of intelligentsia because I don't remember them all. I mean that's like leader. I know you had Modoc, stuff, right? Leader? No? Leader, Modoc, the Guy with the apes. What's his name? Um, <laughs> I want to say Grodd, but that's not right. <laughs> no, it's not Grodd. He has like the monkeys that follow. Yeah, him. yeah. Um, red. Is it red something? Hold on. Oh, no, this is not right. Doom wasn't a part of it. Egghead, this is Egghead Claw, Leader, Modoc, Mad, Mad Thinker. Okay. I remember that. Mole Man. Um, I think there's different And, and I know, I know has... Modoc is usually a joke, but man, like Modoc and the X-Men stuff right now is pretty, pretty, oh. pretty nasty. Oh. When he gets yeah. serious, Red Ghost, that's him. Red, Red Ghost. Ghost. He's okay. the one that has the oh. intelligent. I don't think, think Modoc was always a joke back in the day, probably, right? Like, but. I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe it was. Either way, uh, I think I, this one. Bro, I, the way I see the storyline is like sort of like an initiative era, mm-hmm. but they're like the the head of the school is is some some headmaster that we we don't know of, but he's he's like uh he's he's behind. He's like part of Hydra or the Intelligentsia and he's like slipping Phalanx stuff into these kids into okay. these heroes right and um I don't know, it's just like so like we have Captain Britain so there was that the Captain Britain Corps right or the yeah. school Mm-hmm. And I'm just like so. I was like, okay, and then Jane Foster Thor. So we got we could get like refugees from Asgard, maybe. Namor, okay. Namor. We got kids from Atlantis. They had a school, I think, yeah. too. Oh, what was that terrible series? Was it Inhuman stuff? Where all the schools were competing? What was that Strange Academy? No, mm, no, no, no. This was back during the Inhumanity stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I know what, what you mean. Different schools, but. And then, like, so I'm just seeing, like, everything, like, or, yeah, we can be, like, Drax can be, like, a teacher at the school. <laughs> or at this training How to facility. kill things 101. And, and Nova with the <laughs> Nova Corps, I guess. <clears throat> and meanwhile, like, they're accidentally uh, getting infiltrated with with the Phalanx. <laughs> and that's that's the story. Um. Okay, you could pull in Nova coming to Earth with Drax, so Drax can you know play his saxophone at a nightclub. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And some, and somehow they stumbled into it. Or uh, um, yeah, like or Drax is just yeah, or just Nova and Drax just showing up because like hey, you know like the the Phalanx are here. This is our jam. Yeah, this is our thing. <laughs> We we've dealt with them before. Yeah, works for me. I mean, yeah, and the intelligentsia Modok is a part of that crew anyway. So they they're the brains behind it. They use Hydra as their pawns, 
and are manipulating the phonics as well to corrupt the next generation of heroes. So do we have any kids that we want to throw out there that would be uh, targets? Oh, um, wasn't there, I'm trying to think of like, I can't think of any kids from Asgard. Oh, but damn, the, there, one. there were some Captain Britain people on uh, Avengers Academy, right? Or Avengers Arena? Mm. <laughs> uh, no, I can't. Yeah, think. Um, I don't remember. There definitely was some in Strange Academy. I think there was two brothers from Asgard and a. Well, I mean, from the Cat and Britain core. I sworn there was, but I I don't know. There was was Avengers Arena. Um, that's way back, right? Like, like that was like yeah. the sequel to the to Avengers Academy. That was like arcade yeah, when, uh, doing. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, it was, it was actually good, allowed to kill really some good people. stuff. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. Classic that's, stuff. That was, oh yeah, man, that was awesome. I miss that stuff. Way to name drop. So there is a Wakandan school, a Latvian school. Actually, I don't think Latvia participated. I pulled up the um, the Infinity the Hunt miniseries, which was not yeah. good. But there's a Braddock Academy. Okay. Yeah, there was uh, a uh, there was Kid Britain. <laughs> really? In uh, Avengers Arena. And, uh, Yikes. like, yeah, Bloodstone, a- Apex, and a- Anachronism, those were all from the Bar- Braddock Academy. And Nara. Hmm. How long ago was that? Avengers Academy was 2012-2013. Jeez, 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My son was just born. Mm-hmm. Wow. But yeah, there's like people from the Braddock Academy and all that. Yeah, so we we could have, we can sort of just have like a mix of kids from like all the the different programs, and they yeah. they were tainted by the, the Phalanx, getting tainted by the Phalanx, and all puppeteered by by Modok the entire time. Yikes. If Man, if this was just like an annual, I'd wa- I'd read it. <laughs> like a mini series, <laughs> I'd read it. One shot, yeah, yeah, like a giant size issue. Kev Walker, where is Kev? I know he was doing um, Alien, which was a damn good series too. He was doing Alien for a while and. I don't. I lost track of him after that. Let me, let me see. Because of course, you know. I didn't waste enough time, but hey, <laughs> it's yeah. our show. We can do what yeah. we want. We can. Huh. Yeah, we're Are you at kids? we're like a little we're a little over an hour and a half right now. Comics include Rogue Trooper, Hellblazer, ABC Warriors, Winter, Kevin Inspector, Walker. Badlands, Mean Machine, Damon Fugue, Tor Cyan, Judge Dread, The Legion, Exiles, External, Marvel's so on. The last thing he did. Oh, duh. He's doing the new Guardians of the Galaxy series with uh, Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing. Oh, nice. Oh, and he was doing uh, he, he was doing the Star Wars series, Dr. Afra with uh, Kieran Gillen. Gillen. Yeah, that was a while ago. That's when that series was fantastic. I mean, he hasn't touched well, that since 2019. Kieran, Kieran Gillen was definitely oh, no. murdering his Star, his Star Wars work. It was great. That Dr. Aphra yeah. and that Darth Vader series from him were great, too. Oh, yeah. Um. So what did Walker do? He did... Uh, looks like he did some Doctor Strange with Mark Wade, but Avengers 1 million BC one shot. Published. Hold on. Let me sort this out. 
Yeah, and he was doing the Predator series. Hmm. Glad he's working, at least. Yeah. You know. Oh, I love his love his stuff. Yeah. Love his stuff. Like almost like Caselli and uh Valerio Schiti. It's like wherever they go, I'm tempted to really, really mm-hmm. follow whether I like the stuff or not. Yep. It's nice to have, <laughs> you know, uh talents like that that you can follow as yeah. as a as like beacons, you know. Like Speaking of Skeety, um, you guys need to read Hickman's Gods. I've heard. Yeah, just read the first Is that issue. going on? Are we doing that for EMP? <laughs> it's tempting, but, well, how many books do we have? <laughs> if we're short we on books, like we probably two. could. Let's, let's do it. Let's you do say it. let's do it, but the first issue is like 60-something pages. <laughs> Dude, I, I mean, I, I feel... I'm already frustrated enough with myself for not jumping on X Men in the beginning when Hickman started. I like, I feel like I got to read all Hickman stuff. So, I'm it's it's good. I will tell you that it's damn good. So, I mean, if peep it, um, we haven't scheduled EMP yet. I don't think nope. actually we did, but Sunday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see if you can get through it before Sunday. It'll be all well right. worth it. All right. All right, well, let's get out of here since it's getting late and Viet's falling asleep on the mic. Yes. No. <laughs> All right. Thanks to everybody. Yes. And stuff. Uh, yeah, thank Sign you to our, some... our Patreon subscribers. Uh, if you want to sub- be one slash of those EMP cool cast. people, yeah, patreon.com slash EMPcast. Whew. This was a good episode. Looking for feedback, too. So, listeners, if you guys want to recommend stuff, Hit us up. Email us. Tweet at us. Discord server. Yell loudly. You know. <laughs> Very loudly. Speaking of which, uh, yeah. our boy uh, Tommy G um, mentioned on our last EMBS. Uh, he he says, uh, "You got you guys give any thoughts uh, to just doing a Star Wars podcast?" <laughs> I think about it all the time, yeah. and I was like, <laughs> "I was like the way Bobby talks about it." You probably should. <laughs> and then Alex says, uh, Alex jumped in. He's like, if you do that without me, I'm burning the building down. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, man. Maybe we Bob, the Bobby and Alex featuring Corwin show. Yeah. And then I'll just like, be it. You're all, be it. You're always welcome, yeah. but I know it's not. Yeah. You. And then it's like, uh, yeah, and Tommy's like fan, fan petition for a Bobby Alex star Wars podcast. <laughs> and then and i just nice. put yeah i can host it and just ask dumb questions to piss you guys off <laughs> well i, mean, it, it I would, would need a like moderator the, anyways <laughs> I, I would be like the 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 rookie on that asking questions i mean i i know my star wars i've seen most of the series but when it comes to the extended stuff you know I, that's where you and alex would be able to shine you know what, man? We should get in touch. We should we should get in touch with Alex and see if we can. At least, you know what I mean? Maybe do a special or something at least. I was gonna just say that. Maybe yeah. Maybe one month, just do a nice big special on it. Maybe like our next milestone. Aren't we pretty close to something? We're close to know. a, a two hundred episode if 50. we can. Yeah. Record right? on oh, a actually, basis. I was looking at the math. EMBS fifty will hit the same month as EMP one uh, two hundred. Really. Yeah, that's like every other month. (laughs) You mean (laughs) no? (laughs) Like we do with EMB? If we if we stick to schedule for the rest hmm. of the year, (laughs) you didn't make you didn't say that for it. Uh, anyways, anyways. Well, yeah. stuff to think about for show. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We will catch you all right, next month. See you next month. Bye bye. From the zeros to the millions. This is a lot of class packed into one podcast. They probably ought to have laws passed, but it's too late to stop the onslaught. Raw blast of compacted, bombastic, five alarm sass. They're talking AVX, way back to secret invasion. They're talking flying up high in the sky, down to the feet on the pavement. They're reading the pages of every single one of the summer events. So other than Venice, you want to be coming to them when you want the Avengers. They're up inside of your environment with flying iron fists. Giant-sized Goliaths and the tiniest super scientists. Try denying it, but 
I insist. There's other podcasts, but this is Earth's Mightiest. EMP, literally MP, 3 TNT. Young, new, mighty, and secretly try to deny in it, but I insist. There's other podcasts, but this is Earth's Mightiest. EMP, literally MP, 3 TNT. Young, new, mighty, and secretly try to deny in it, but I insist. There's other podcasts, but this is Earth's Mightiest.